Good morning. My name is Jen Elsenbrook, and I am a student at Wartburg. It says I'm a student in here. I am a, um, I'm also in my internship to become a minister of word and service, which is called a deacon at Wartburg. So I'm really glad that I get a chance to do pulpit supply, and it's great to be in this, in this service with you. So... Let's begin with confession and forgiveness found on page 211. Blessed be the Holy Trinity, one God who forgives all of our sins, whose mercy endures forever. Amen. Almighty God, to whom all hearts are open, all desires known, and from whom no secrets are hid. Cleanse us and our thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Jesus Christ our Lord.
mantle, you know that as fragile creatures surrounded by great dangers, we cannot by ourselves stand upright. Give us strength of mind and body so that even when we suffer because of human sin, we may rise victorious through your Son, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Amen. Please be seated for the readings. The first reading is from the 58th chapter of Isaiah. If you remove the yoke from among you, the pointing of the finger, the speaking of evil, if you offer your food to the hungry and satisfy the needs of the afflicted, then your light shall rise in the darkness and your gloom be like the noonday. The Lord will guide you continually and satisfy your needs in parched places and make your bones strong and you shall be like a watered garden, like a spring of water whose waters never fail. Your ancient ruins shall be rebuilt and shall raise up the foundations of many generations. You shall be called the repairer of the breach, the restorer of streets to live in. If you refrain from trampling the Sabbath, you're pursuing your own interests on my holy day. If you call the Sabbath a delight and the holy day of the Lord honorable, if you honor it, not going your own ways, serving your own interests or pursuing your own affairs, then you shall take delight in the Lord and I will make you ride upon the heights of the earth. I will feed you with the heritage of your ancestor Jacob, for the mouth of the Lord has spoken, the word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Here's the psalm refrain for August 21st. The Lord crowns you with mercy and steadfast love. Let's sing that together. The Lord crowns you with mercy and steadfast love. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul, and all that is within me. Bless God's holy name. Bless the Lord, O oh my soul. Forget not all God's benefits. Who forgives all your sins and heals all your diseases? Who redeems your life from the grave and crowns you with steadfast love and mercy? The Lord crowns you with mercy and steadfast love. Who satisfies your desires with good things so that your youth is renewed like an eagle's. O Lord, you provide vindication and justice for all who are oppressed. You made known your ways to Moses and your works to the children of Israel. Lord, you are full of compassion and mercy, slow to anger and abounding in steadfast love. The Lord crowns you with mercy and steadfast love. The second reading is from the 12th chapter of Hebrews, beginning with the 18th verse. You have not come to something that can be touched, a blazing fire and darkness and gloom and a tempest and the sound of a trumpet and a voice whose words made the hearers beg that not another word be spoken to them, for they could not endure the order that was given. If even an animal touches the mountain, it shall be stoned to death. Indeed, so terrifying was the sight that Moses said, I tremble with fear. But you have come to Mount Zion and to the city of the living God, the heavenly Jerusalem, and to innumerable angels in festal gathering, 
and to the assembly of the firstborn who are enrolled in heaven, and to God, the judge of all, and to the spirits of the righteous made perfect, and to Jesus, the mediator of a new covenant, and to the sprinkled blood that speaks a better word than the blood of Abel. See that you do not refuse the one who is speaking, for if they did not escape when they refused the one who warned them on earth, how much less will we escape if we reject the one who warns from heaven? At that time his voice shook the earth, but now he has promised. Yet once more I will shake not only the earth, but also the heaven. This phrase, yet once more, indicates the removal of what is shaken, that is, created things, so that what cannot be shaken may remain. Therefore, since we are receiving a kingdom that cannot be shaken, let us give thanks, by which we offer to God an acceptable worship, worship with reverence and awe, for indeed our God is a consuming fire. The word of the Lord. Thanks, Thanks be to God. God. to Luke in the 13th chapter. Glory to you, Lord. Now Jesus was teaching in one of the synagogues on the Sabbath, and just then there appeared a woman with a spirit that had crippled her for 18 years. She was bent over and quite unable to stand up straight. When Jesus saw her, he called her over and said, Woman, you are set free from your ailment. When he laid his hand on her, immediately she stood up straight and began praising God. But the leader of the synagogue, indignant because Jesus had cured on the Sabbath, kept saying to the crowd, There are six days on which work ought to be done. Come on those days and be cured, and not on the Sabbath. But the Lord answered him and said, You hypocrites! Does not each of you on the Sabbath untie his ox or donkey from the manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 long years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? When he said this, all his opponents were put to shame, and the entire crowd was rejoicing at all the wonderful things he was doing. Here ends the reading. Praise, Praise to you, Lord Christ. Let's pray. Gracious God, Open my mouth to speak and our ears to hear your truth and grace. Amen. Amen. I'm going to start by asking a question, and I really want you to answer, okay? How many of you have had back pain? How, many, how long were you suffering? Like one month, two months? The gospel tells us that this woman in our gospel had been crippled for 18 years. 18 years! So let's put that in perspective. If you are suffering today, that would mean you have either suffered since... 2004, or you will be suffering until 2040. Ugh. I am sure she endured countless stares from people, so I imagine she was physically 
as well as emotionally uncomfortable. Can you imagine how much she was missing in life? Always having a view of the ground. If there were children here, I was going to do a children's sermon where they had to look down and tell me what they saw. Just looking down. The fact that this story was unique to the Gospel of Luke tells us something. According to New Testament scholar Mark Allen Powell, Luke's Gospel shows special concern for outcasts, for victims of oppression, and those who appear to be at a disadvantage in society. This concern may also explain the prominence of women. The deep compassion Jesus had for this woman is clear. Jesus was teaching in the synagogue when, quote, just then there appeared a woman. Unquote. Now, the Bible doesn't, the Bible says that when Jesus saw her, he called her over. It does not say he waited until he was done teaching. It also doesn't say Jesus pulled her aside. It does say when he saw her, he called her over. As I imagine this playing out, Jesus was in the middle of the crowd. It seems that calling her over would bring everyone's attention to her. Then I pictured Jesus bending over, laying a hand on her back, making eye contact, and healing her. It gives me chills when I picture this playing out. Next, the leader of the synagogue said, there are six days on which to work. Come on those days and be cured, not on the Sabbath. Whoa. So essentially, they are indirectly scolding the woman for being healed. I can imagine how she must have felt. But Jesus, in true Jesus fashion, says, hypocrites, does not each of you untie your ox or donkey from a manger and lead it away to give it water? And ought not this woman, a daughter of Abraham, whom Satan bound for 18 years, be set free from this bondage on the Sabbath day? Jesus put them to shame. Okay. There's mostly women here, so I'm going to say this. Full, dis full disclosure, I was a tad irked when I read that Jesus was comparing healing a woman to untying a donkey. But I quickly remembered the culture. I also remembered how difficult it was to get through to the Pharisees. So this comparison was probably necessary. The Pharisees scolding Jesus for the Sabbath day healing did not hinder the crowd, though. The entire crowd was rejoicing. And when you think about it, is there any better way to celebrate the Sabbath than by healing a beloved child of God? Jesus was truly God and truly man. I bet Jesus could imagine her uncomfortableness. Jesus walked among us. I thank God that God knows our pain because God walked among us. Now that I have painted a picture of what's going on in the gospel, how does this apply to us? God, through Jesus, is clearly showing us what is important and who is important. Our Lord sees us. God sees our joy and our sadness. God sees our pain and our contentment. 
God sees our struggles and our happiness. I am called to be a deacon. As a deacon, I am called to speak publicly to the world in solidarity with the poor and marginalized. One of my favorite scriptures is from the Sermon on the Mount found in Matthew. I want to tie today's gospel with this part of Matthew. Jesus sees the crowds, and I can kind of imagine him saying to the, his disciples, okay guys, come up here and listen to me first. Then he goes on saying, blessed are the poor in spirit. Blessed are those who mourn. Blessed are the meek. Blessed are those who hunger and thirst for righteousness. Blessed are the merciful. Blessed are the pure in heart. Blessed are the peacemakers. Blessed are those who are persecuted for righteousness, righteousness sake. Blessed are you when people revile you and persecute you and utter all kinds of evil against you falsely on my account. Poor in spirit. What does that mean? We all know what it means to be poor, that is outwardly, financially poor. Think of a beggar on the street. To be poor in spirit then might mean to feel hopeless, unable to see or care about the world around you. The Sermon on the Mount kept coming in my mind as I was preparing this message. At first, I couldn't understand why. As I was searching for other information for this message, I came across a writing from Reverend Nancy Lynn called, quote, Love Your Neighbor, Healing in Luke 13, unquote. Reverend Nancy says she was bent over and quite unable to stand up straight. For 18 years, she suffered. And while her suffering appears to be physical, Luke makes it clear that it is a matter of spirit that has left her this way. Her spirit is broken, demoralized, and hopeless. She can't see anything but the ground around her. She cannot look up to see the beauty of creation or make eye contact with anyone around her. After, well, it's really not over, so rather during COVID, many of us feel poor in spirit. We are weary. We worry. We pray. We struggle with fear. We are poor in spirit. Can you think of people who helped you during the pandemic or helping you now? I recently read a quote by Reverend Barbara Brown Taylor. I'm pretty sure most of you have heard of her. She's brilliant. She said, the only clear line I draw is this. When my religion tries to come between me and my neighbor, I will choose my neighbor. Jesus never commanded me to love my religion. Do you see why I kept thinking of the Sermon on the Mount as I was writing this? God placed it on my heart. God wants us to know that we are not forgotten. Jesus picked the woman in Luke 13 out of what I imagine 
was a large crowd. Jesus saw both her physical and emotional pain. When you are weary, Jesus sees you. When you are in pain, Jesus feels your pain. When you pray, Jesus hears you. Blessed are the poor in spirit, for theirs is the kingdom of heaven. Thanks be to God. together in the affirmation of our faith. 
Do you believe in God the Creator? We believe in one God, maker of heaven and earth, who in goodness created us and by grace sustains us. Do you believe in Jesus Christ? We believe in Jesus Christ, child of God, who became human being and lived among us, experiencing fully the joys, sorrows, and temptations of human life. While he walked the earth, he taught and healed, but most of all, he loved and showed us how to love one another. By us and for us, he was crucified, he died and was buried, yet he rose again and lives on, freeing us and empowering us to be children of God. Do you believe in the Holy Spirit? We believe in the Holy Spirit, poured out among the early disciples of the day of Pentecost, and upon us. Let us come near to the Holy One in prayer. You crown your church with steadfast love and mercy. Guide us continually in our baptismal covenant to strive for justice and peace in all the earth. Use our diverse gifts in service to the whole people of God. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You satisfy the needs of all creatures, protect the habitats of fish and birds, repair ecosystems damaged by misuse, neglect, or natural disaster, that all creation may thrive. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You make your ways known to all people. Inspire the rulers and leaders of nations with your compassion and mercy. Raise up activists and community organizers to restore places affected by violence, poverty, and inequality. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You provide justice for all who are oppressed and relief to all who are afflicted. Heal those who are bent over by addiction, depression, and anxiety. Set free all who cry out under the weight of mental, emotional, or physical distress. We pray for our friends and members listed in the bulletin. Merciful God, receive our prayer. You call us to delight in the Sabbath. Renew our bodies, minds, and spirits in this worshiping assembly. Give rest to all who lead our congregation in worship, study, and service. We ask for special prayers for Jen, Michael, our music leaders, Kate, and our council, and all the other people who keep our church moving forward and doing the work of God. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Generations bless our holy name. We give you thanks for the communion of saints who have gathered in prayer and praise in this place. Support us in your love until we rest forever in you. Merciful God, receive our prayer. Receive the prayers of your children, merciful God, and hold us forever in your steadfast love. Through Jesus Christ, our holy wisdom. Amen. The peace of the Lord be with you. And also with you. I invite you to share a sign of God's peace with one another.
have set before us a plentiful harvest. As we feast on your goodness, strengthen us to labor in your field and equip us to bear, the, bear fruit for the good of all. In the name of Jesus. darkness, called forth beauty from chaos, and brought life into being. For your word of life, O oh God, we give you thanks and praise. By your word, you called your people Israel to tell of your wonderful gifts, freedom from captivity, water on the desert journey, a pathway home from exile, wisdom for life with you, for your word of life, O oh God. We give you grace and grace. Through Jesus Christ, your word made flesh, you speak to us and call us witness. Your forgiveness through the cross, life to those entombed by death, the way of your self-giving love, for your word of life, O oh God. We give you thanks and praise. Send forth your spirit of truth. O oh God, rekindle your gifts within us. Renew our faith, increase our hope, and deepen our love for the sake of a world in need. Faithful to your word, O oh God, draw us near to all who call on you. Through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord, to whom, with you and the Holy Spirit, be glory and honor forever. Amen. Amen. Let us pray as our Lord taught us. Our Father, who art in heaven, Hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done, on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not to temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, and the power, and the glory, Forever and ever. Amen. 
Son, and Holy Spirit bless you, comfort you, and show you the path of life this day and always. Amen. Amen. which is good. Render no one evil for evil. Strengthen the faint-hearted. Support the weak. Help the afflicted. Honor all people. Love and serve God, rejoicing in the power of the Holy Spirit. Thanks be to God. Go in peace, Serve the Lord. Thank you, Amen. Thank you, Jen, for leading our worship. I really appreciate it. Thank you so much.
Thank you for having me.